Howdy, this is Dan Baumgart with the National Weather Service in La Crosse. With one of the scenario trainings for the probability of weather type and the release of the forecast builder. This training is on precipitation type scenarios that will be used in the probability of weather type. There's three scenario groups right now that we're currently training on, working with precipitation types, winter forecasting situations, and limitations and features associated with the POWT. In this module, we'll touch on a few different things that you'll use operationally with the probability of weather type. One, adding more freezing rain to the forecast grids, adding more sleet or ice pellets, and both of these can be done in the inverse process to reduce freezing rain and ice pellets. Also, how drizzle and freezing drizzle is handled in the grids and in the forecast. And finally, some discussion of the probability of ice present grid and when and when not to use that grid. Let's start with adding more freezing rain. There's two ways in the probability of weather type that you can add more freezing rain. First, you can warm the maximum warm layer uh, wet bulb temperature aloft. Uh, and re referring back to the diagram that we see here on the right, again, the more you warm it, the more you're getting towards an all liquid solution aloft. You can also cool it and get more toward the snow probability. So again, reaching back to the research here, the maximum wet bulb temperature aloft is important in our calculations. Anywhere from about 1 to 3.5 degrees, we see sleet introduction colder than those temperatures snow. And if you want to add more freezing rain, you bounce the temperatures to where your liquid curve is really starting to increase. So that's the max warm layer aloft. Secondly, the probability of weather type looks for a probability of refreezing to sleet in the boundary layer. So we need to make sure that that's either non-existent uh, or very low probabilities for sleet. One other way to get, more, to get more freezing rain is to remove the ice cloud from the probability of weather type grids. And that's done through the probability of ice present grid and setting it to zero. That will change your entire situation or your entire gridded forecast over to either freezing rain or freezing drizzle. So just looking at it from a forecast reference standpoint, here's a sounding on the right, left-hand side for that deep cloud layer process here. And what we're going to do is try to either increase that maximum wet bubble off, or we're going to decrease the probability of refreeze asleep to get more freezing rain. On the right-hand side, you see the shallow cloud process here, more of a freezing drain freezing drizzle, freezing rain scenario here. And this is where you'd use the probability of ice present grid and introduce a very low or 0% of ice, prob, uh, ice present in this environment, which would convert you all over to a liquid solution, provided that your surface temperature is near freezing. Currently, we have a forecast based on our warm layer temperature of ice pellets and a chance of freezing rain across the south. And what we want to do is during the daytime hours, let's say our, we're in the morning here and we're looking at the afternoon and seeing that we've already got freezing rain across our southern portion of the forecast area that's being observed. So what we want to do is uh, increase our freezing rain across the southern forecast area, kind of in this area here, southwest Wisconsin and into northeast Iowa. So we're going to start up the forecast builder. And then because we're just dealing with the afternoon forecast, kind of an ESTF update, we're going to run it for today. We'll start it uh, on the top down grids because I've just showed you the foundational grids. So we're not going to edit those at all. But we want to go into the top down grids and begin our editing process. So here's what the forecast builder provides us for a window here. We're going to slide this off to the side. Resume our area here. Hey, we got our normal weather radio test today. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> so let's take a look here uh, at our temperatures again at the surface. You see 28 at 18Z. And there's our wet, uh, our wet bulb temperature aloft grid. And so you see 3 degrees Celsius 
they're coming into the southern portion of the forecast area. And with the as the cyclone approaches, that does warm to the northwest. And so our, our precipitation types are becoming warmer, if you will, from snow to sleet to freezing rain. Uh, we're, we're changing over as that cyclone approaches. That whole band moves northward. So what we want to do is we want to go in here and edit for the current observations that we're that we're seeing out there which is more freezing rain than we had had in the forecast further north so it would be kind of in this band here southwest wisconsin we want to increase those warm layer wet bulb temperatures in that area to the three to four degrees celsius line based on max temperature our wet bulb temperature aloft and as we get across into that three to four Celsius range we will start to move to an all liquid scenario so we slowly bump that further and further north depending on where the observations are and where you think that forecast needs to have more freezing rain so again we're using the pencil tool in this scenario but remember in real time that you'll have some options here with the RAP, the NAM, and the GFS to actually populate this grid directly and not use the uh, pencil tool if you think these uh, smart initializations or these grids down here are, are more valid. So now we're going to just forecast uh, warm the maximum wet bulb temperature aloft for later in the period by late afternoon. So now we've taken that forecast and we've warmed up into all of southwest Wisconsin and northeast Iowa into a maximum wet bulb temperature aloft that should be conducive for all liquid scenarios. We'll just interpolate that. One of the other things you need to do is make sure that your probability of refreezing to sleet is a zero percent grid there if it's if you forecast all freezing rain in that scenario let's just remove all the probability that any refreeze will occur that will remove any kind of sleet or ice pellets from our forecast and we're just going to zero that grid out and because we think that that there's no reason that the cold air should become deeper and colder we're going to zero out the entire afternoon and save those grids And then we're ready to move on. There's no probability of ice present grid here. That assumes then that we have a deep cloud process, which is what we have. So on to step four of the forecast builder. Okay, so now to step four, which is the creating the precipitation types. We're gonna click on Stratiform here. And that's all we need to do. We're gonna keep all the other defaults set as they are and it, all the precipitation type probabilities will be created as you can see there on the portion, second or bottom portion of the screen. We're going to move the forecast builder window off to the side and just inspect some of these probabilities for the afternoon hours after our edits were made. First we'll check out the sleep probability Notice now the sleep probabilities are nowhere near the southern portion of the forecast area until uh, very late in the period, actually after our edits. Probability is of snow were moved a little bit further north and constricted a little bit more because of our pencil tool edits. And finally, the most important one, probability of freezing rain is now increased further northwest into southwest Wisconsin further than it was. Snow amounts now automatically take into account the change in the probabilities. So the QPF is broken out differently. We see an ice accumulation is further north than what it was. Also recreates the power line and tree ice accumulation estimates and the amount of sleet. You can notice that there's no sleet now in the far southwest corner of Wisconsin. So ice accumulations are now present there and it took the QPF and instead of putting it into sleet and snow in the snow amount grid, it took it and moved it over to the ice accumulation. So on to step number five, which is any non-precipitating grids. We're just gonna blow right through those right now. 
and not make any changes. And that will take us to our final step, which is simply rerunning the weather grids. And we're going to uh, just click on the probability typed coverage. It doesn't matter because our probabilities, our pops are all 100. So it's going to be definites in the weather grid as it is. So we'll watch this weather grid now being made. Definite freezing rain now over most of southwest Wisconsin where that was a sleet and freezing rain mixture consistent too with the ice accumulation changes that we saw.